Alright, on to Generation 3. The very same generation that seems to have gotten a fair amount of people into the series. This here is the turning point in rosters, as before the previous generations have decent enough monsters with a handful of great standouts. Here however, the handful of monsters are eh, to not that great, while the majority are really fun to hunt. It's in this generation we were introduced to underwater combat, a couple of new monster body types like the leviathans and brute wyverns, and there are even a few new monsters who feel like new variations of older ones, such as Uragan in comparison to Basarus and Gravios. Well, let's take a look at my top 10 favorite monsters in the third generation. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion, based on my own personal preference. References. Here we go. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten to hunt many of the third generation Elder Dragons, like Elatrion. Sedeus just barely makes it on this list due to it being a pretty memorable final boss in 3U's low rank. On top of that, Sedeus has a great design with a long serpent-like body, bull-like horns, and this cool glowing pattern on its belly. Don't forget about that amazing theme that plays when hunting the Sedeus. It's easily one of the best themes in the series. I also think that the final area you hunted in is pretty neat, as it's an underwater ruin that creates a nice atmosphere for hunting the monster. As for positives, that's it. The battle against Sedeus itself is boring. As you follow it slowly swimming to the ruins, Sedeus hardly even attacks you and the hunt can go on forever, always taking about a half hour. It's a cool memorable monster with a nice sword and shield, but at the same time, I don't miss this monster too much. The third generation has a lot of good early monsters to hunt, like the Baroth and the Gobul, kinda. Koropeko, however, really stands out to me. Bird-like monsters are creatures I can't help but to find appealing. I like the Koro's horn-looking beak, fire-starting wings, and its colorful body. Understanding Koropeko's attacks isn't too hard, making it an easy monster to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. Sure, in early game you will have to sharpen your weapon a lot when you first take it on, but as long as you're prepared with whetstones, you'll be fine. Koropeko can give itself buffs, though I never find these to be impactful. The truly annoying thing about Koropeko would be its ability to call other monsters, and sometimes it can call some very deadly threats, so dung bombs are recommended. Still, I find it to be a fun early monster, with an alright armor armor set, and some decent weapons. Durambros is a monster that, at first, really intimidated me. Just by looking at it, you can tell Durambros can hit hard and has tons of health, both of which are true, but the more I hunted Durambros, the more I started to like it. Yes, Durambros will try to charge at you, or hit you with its tail, but these are, for the most part, easy to dodge moves. Things get interesting when Durambros starts spinning around. If you stay in close by its legs, you can trip the monster up and hit its weak spot on its back. Or, you can move away from Durambros and let it fly into the air and strike it when it lands, leaving the monster pretty open. Little details like this help keep the hunt more interesting. Plus, I like Durambros' design. It's a moving mountain bull-like creature with a round body and a club for a tail, which you can even mine when it's broken. I love Durambros' sword and shield, as it has great power and sharp and is my go-to weapon for 3U high rank. Armor-wise, Durambros is positive too, as you usually get some good skills from it. Durambros is by far one of the most unique monsters I've hunted, and I hope it makes another return someday. Devil Joe is a very Godzilla-inspired monster, which is even referenced in its theme, one I enjoy listening to. A monster who never stops eating, and will hunt almost anything, making it a top predator. Because of Devil Joe's appetite, using status-inflicting meat is really effective. It's also an intimidating monster, with all those teeth, spiky body, and being a towering beast. Thanks to Devil Joe's constant pinning, I learned the importance of dung bombs, but once you start to understand Stand Devil Joe's attacks, the hunt becomes really balanced. I mean, yeah, Devil Joe can hit 
really damn hard, but at the same time, its moves are rather slow, making them usually easy to dodge. When it's enraged and becomes more plump and red, admittedly, Devil Joe would become faster and hit much harder. Though, it still has well-telegraphed attacks with a dragon's breath that isn't too difficult to avoid, which helps keep this a fun, challenging, and fair fight. I've never made or used any of its armor, but I do have a few Devil Joe weapons, and they're okay. I like the look at them at least. If you want a hunt that can be hard but fair, Devil Joe is a perfect monster. I find Giganox to be so much better than Kezu. Here we have a creepy flatworm-like dragon who hangs out in caves where it creates egg sacs for little giggies. What's interesting about Giganox is that in its normal state, you can hit its head easily without your weapon bouncing off, but not its tail. And this is reversed when Giganox is enraged. On top of that, Giganox's pale skin turns black when enraged, which looks killer. I will confess I'm not good at dodging its bite attack when Giganox extends its neck, as it's got crazy good range with that. People often hate this monster because it's a poisoning fiend. And I get it, poison sucks. Often, I take on Giganox with poison immune armor, which helps things out a lot. Though, even that being said, I still really like Giganox, as its numerous poison-based attacks like spitting poison gas balls, creating poisonous exploding egg sacs, and poisonous gas from under it help keep you more on your toes when fighting the monster. Not only that, but Giganox armor is my favorite set from 3U, as it has earplugs, speed sharpness, and increases the chance of inflicting status ailments. Since Giganox is a poison-based monster, its weapons end up reflecting this as well with my favorites being the Hunting Horn, Sword and Shield, and especially those dual blades. Sorry everyone, but I love Giganox, and I hope to see it in a future game, instead of Kezu. Berioth is one of the monsters I couldn't wait to hunt once I had seen one. I love Berioth's polar design, with its armored back, spiky tail, saber-tooth-like tusks, and its awesome spiked winged arms. By far, Berioth is one of the coolest ice-based monsters in the series. At first, I found the hunt to be a bit tricky, as Berioth can get some decent range when it swings its tail, and the shoulder slam took me some time to get used to. While Berioth will fly around and shoot out ice tornadoes, it's actually not that difficult. Once you figure out Berioth's attack patterns, it can become quite easy to exploit its openings. And it's a decently fast monster who will punish you if you make a big enough mistake. Aside from the hunt, I also love Berioth for its weapons. Every weapon you can make from Berioth looks badass, with some of the neatest being the greatsword, sword and shield, lance, and switch axe. Berioth armor is a good set to go for, at least in 3U, to get some decent evasion boost and increase to ice attacks. For me, Berioth is just an awesome looking monster, with great weapons and a fun hunt, even if the monster itself isn't that extraordinary, though I would love to see it return in the 5th generation. Here's the badass, monstrous wolf himself, Zenogre. Being the thunder under the moonlight, Zenogre is an imposing force to deal with, much like his design implies, with those large forearms, a fierce face, and spiky plating. This is one powerful beast. From his shoulder check, tail slam, and even dropping his body on the ground, these moves can do some serious damage, and it's so much fun. Zenogre is a fast-ish monster who will absolutely destroy you if you aren't taking him seriously. So, you have to be on your top game if you plan on winning. In fact, Zenogre is so confident he'll be victorious that on occasion, he'll just start strutting his stuff. Now, yes, Zenogre is a thunder-based monster who has a weak electrical attack when in his normal state. But should he charge up enough electricity, look out! Almost all of his moves get an electrical boost to them, making them more powerful and even increasing his range a bit. Plus, when fully charged, Zenogre looks amazing. 
Hunting Zenogar is a great idea as he has some useful armor that also makes you look like a badass. And his weapons are fantastic if you need something with great thunder based attack. Personally, I like the long sword, dual blades, and definitely the sword and shield. Basically, Zenogar is a great challenging hunt with some awesome gear. There are good reasons as to why so many people love this monster. If you ever wanted to hunt a monster who enjoys creating explosions left and right, well good news, Brachidios is perfect for you. First off, Brachidios is by far one of my favorite brute wyverns. I mean, the dark blue with neon green is a great color scheme. Then we have that club-like tail and that hammer-like head. The green on its body, for those of you who might not know, is slime from the monster that it will use in battle. When the slime hits the ground, it starts to turn red, causing hard-hitting explosions, which is a unique and entertaining concept. Though at times, the slime can get in the way when fighting, but that's kind of the point of it. Should Brachidios hit you, then you can get inflicted with Blast Blight, which if you can't get rid of in time, will cause an explosion if you get hit again. So yeah, Brachidios can be quite the health draining battle if you aren't careful, but that's not all. Once Brachidios is enraged, the green slime on its body becomes yellow and orange, and now every slime attack from before becomes an instant explosion. Brachidios even gets a few new moves when enraged, like a huge area explosion attack and an explosion trail attack. Things get pretty intense in the battle, but damn is it fun. Best part of Brachidios is its weapons. All of them have blast blight, so you can cause explosions too. And there's one for every weapon type, like my dual blades, sword and shield, and my personal favorite, insect glaive. Its armor looks really nice too, and is useful as well if you're using Brachidios weapons or plan on using bombs. Brachidios is one explosive monster that's so much fun. So I had a hard time choosing my number one between these last two monsters. Both of them are enjoyable and neat monsters, but I'm putting Ignactor at number two. The Leviathan Ignactor has easily become one of my favorite fire-based monsters. I mean, he has an awesome red lizard fish-like body, cool fin that goes down his back, and such an interesting head with a hard beak that even makes a sweet clacking sound before Ignactor shoots out a stream of fire. Ignactor's body is even covered in some lava that will glow red when it's warm and then cool off, turning to black, making this monster so visually engaging. The cool off lava isn't just a visual thing either, as its body becomes harder when this happens, making Ignactor more resistant to your attacks. You'll have to wait for Ignactor to go underground or in some lava for it to heat up again so you can attack, and by breaking these body parts, this will allow you to attack the same spot even when the lava is cooled. Add in the fact that Ignatar will swim through the ground, slide its body around, shoot out fire streams, and even stick out only its upper body to do a large area fire stream, and you have yourself a very fun hunt. Ignactor also has one of the best armor designs I've seen in the series, female-wise, at least to me. And hey, the armor is useful. Unfortunately, I haven't used too many of Ignactor's weapons, only touched its dual blades and longsword, both of which are great. Haven't gotten to play with the sword and shield yet though, but that doesn't stop me from loving Ignactor. As unsurprising as this may be, Legiacris is my number one. At first, I wanted to love Legiacris, but didn't because I didn't find the hunt in 3U to be all that great. Thankfully, Legiacris was brought back for generations, where they improved the monster greatly. Now there are no more underwater sections. Instead, you take on Legiacris only on land. To make up for this change, Legiacris was given a few new moves, like shooting out more electric balls that can generate bolts of lightning between them, creating electro orbs that circle the monster, and even calling out these electrical discs that travel across the ground. Keep in mind, the Legiacris will still slide around, swing its tail, and slam its body down. When I first fought Legiacris in Generations, I didn't do so great. Turns out you shouldn't be too aggressive when hunting Legiacris, as when it roars, it will quickly summon some lightning and electrify its body. So if you're too close, you get hit by this, leaving you open for the Legiacris to punish you harshly. It's challenging, 
but rewarding once you conquer this beast. I have to say, Legaikris has some killer looking armor, even if the skills are just okay. It's worth it to me anyway. As for its weapons, oh, they're so much fun. The charge blade looks intimidating, dual blades are great, longsword is pretty nice, and that sword and shield is just fantastic. Again, it was hard choosing between Legaikris and Ignactor, but in the end, they're both great leviathans I enjoy hunting time and time again. Well, that's my list, and I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to share your favorite third generation monsters down in the comments below. Join me next time where we will be finishing things off for now with the recently ended fourth generation. See y'all then.